you'd like to be seated just for a few moments, you're very, very welcome to the Basilica of Our Lady Queen of Ireland on this, the first Sunday of Advent. I welcome all of you here in the Basilica and those of you joining us online from all over the world, as you usually do. We unite your prayers with ours here this morning uh, in Knock. We remember in this Mass, Frank Conboy of Avergul, whose anniversary occurs at this time. And since it is the first Sunday of Advent, we light the Advent wreath, which is here in the sanctuary. <clears throat> the wreath is a symbolic understanding of Advent itself. The circle of evergreens that you can see here symbolizes God without beginning and without end, to which time without end is eternity. The evergreens stand for eternal life, and evergreens don't die in winter, so God never dies, it symbolizes that. We are born to live forever with him. The candles represent Christ, the light of the world, reminds us that week by week during Advent, uh, this wreath, each candle is lit on the circle as we approach Christmas itself. It's a time of waiting. Advent is waiting. Waiting for what? Waiting for two things. We look forward to the coming of Christ at the end of time, and then in the immediate run-up to Christmas, awaiting the birth of the Christ child. The candles are purple. There's one of them a little different there, you can see. It's rose-colored or uh, pink-colored, and it, it's lit on the third Sunday of Advent to show that we're about to approach Christmas. We have to get our spiritual houses in order, as it were, uh, to celebrate the Grace Feast itself. And the rest of the candles and my vestments are in purple because this particular period of time is a time of repentance and symbolizing renewal, a change of heart, to look at ourselves again uh, kind of sort of like Lent in that way. It's a preparation time. We prepare ourselves for the great celebration. So I'm going to bless the Advent wreath and then light the first can candle on the wreath for the first Sunday and then bless yourselves as well. O God, your church joyfully waits the coming of its Saviour, who enlightens our hearts and dispels the darkness of ignorance and sin. We ask you to bless this Advent wreath Pour forth your blessings upon us all, O Lord, as we light the candles of this wreath. May their light reflect the splendor of Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. And so we stand now to begin our celebration of the Eucharist. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you all. In order now to prepare ourselves to celebrate this Mass worthily, we call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I've greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I've done and what I've failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. 
Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, that the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. You, Lord, yourself are our Father. Our Redeemer is your ancient name. Why, Lord, leave us to stray from your ways and harden our heart against fearing you? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your inheritance. Oh, that you would tear the heavens open and come down. At your presence, the mountains would melt. Nor ear has heard, nor eye has seen, any God but you, act like this for those who trust him. You guide those who act with integrity and keep your ways in mind. You were angry when we were sinners. We had long been rebels against you. We were all like men unclean, all that integrity of ours like filthy clothing. We have all withered like leaves, and our sins blew us away like the wind. No one invoked your name or roused himself to catch hold of you. For you hid your face from us and gave us up to the power of our sins. And yet, Lord, you are our father. We the clay, you the potter. We are all the work of your hand. The word of the Lord. The second reading, a reading from the fourth letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. 
May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ send you grace and peace. I never stop thanking God for all the graces you have received through Jesus Christ. I thank him that you have been enriched in so many ways, especially in your teachers and preachers. The witness to Christ has indeed been strong among you, so that you will not be without any of the gifts of the Spirit while you are waiting for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. And he will keep you steady and without blame until the last day, the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because God, by calling you, has joined you to his Son, Jesus Christ, and God is faithful. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, Be on your guard, stay awake, because you never know when the time will come. It is like a man traveling abroad. He has gone from home and left his servants in charge, each with his own task. And he has told the doorkeeper to stay awake. So stay awake, because you do not know when the master of the house is coming evening, midnight, cockcrow, dawn. If he comes unexpectedly, he must not find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> Staying awake is a tall order, especially when you're tired. Of course, Jesus doesn't mean it literally. It's staying awake in terms of ourselves and in terms of our spiritual lives, if you like. It reminds me, I don't know what your memory of school is like, but I have a lot of mixed memories of school, national school in particular. But one common experience was when the master, we used to call them back then, the master, and they were certainly masters of all they surveyed in the classroom and beyond the school. Uh, but if the master left the left the classroom, somebody was put in charge. And so you were put in charge up at, the, up at the top desk. And in those days, of course, quite a while ago, uh, there was a blackboard and chalk, and if you remember the phrase, a glomthor, or one of these erasers. So you're put there, and your job was, if anybody acted up, you put their initials on the blackboard, so that when the master, if he came back, and he saw your initials, he'd know who you were, and you'd receive the proper punishment. And so it was, whether it was Richard Gibbons, R.G., John O'Malley, J.O.M., and so on and so forth. And so that was all right. That was, the, that, was the, that was the test. The absence of the master was the test. But thankfully, before the teacher would return, the honourable thing was done. You'd keep an ear out and wait for the footsteps. And the person in charge would be quick enough to take the eraser, or the glantor, and rub out all the names so that there was nothing on the blackboard when he came in, so nobody could be. That was the honourable thing to do. However, there were those that were put in charge that weren't, you might say, fully awake. Fully awake. And so they'd just barely get the glantor before the door would open, in comes the master, and they're in the middle of getting rid of the evidence. But still, some names would remain. They weren't awake. It is like the man traveling abroad. He has gone from home and left his servants in charge, each with his own task. And he has told the doorkeeper, stay awake. The Gospel 
is not just talking about an absentee landlord. He's talking about ourselves. And just as in school, and so it is with some of us who are willing, maybe during our lives, to do childish things when it comes to what the gospel asks of us, absence will always be the test. A test of what? Well, a test of durability, of fidelity, a test of maybe just being self-aware in terms of where we are with God and with neighbour. That's what the season of Advent in preparation for Christmas is about. As I said at the beginning, that's why the candles are purple. That's why I'm wearing purple. It's a sign of prepar preparation, being prepared. Will we faithfully do the work that we've been left to do? Or will we play up, hoping we won't get caught and the names will be rubbed out? It's strange. We're destined for eternity, and yet we don't know how to spend our time here on earth. We lament images that we see on TV of wars, of climate uh, breakdown, really, of famine, of abuse, of the growth of violence on our streets, and yet some of us think that it will never affect us, maybe. We shake our heads and we might sort of come to the conclusion, if only we were in charge, everything would be all right. There's a little bit of self-delusion going on. Condemning corruption and abuse is all very well. <clears throat> but how do we acknowledge what's going on within ourselves? Advent reflects on the idea that absence is a test. We prepare for two comings the coming of Christ at the end of time, and the immediate coming at Christmas. And this forces us maybe, or just encourages us, to look again at where we stand in relation to God and ourselves. We must become aware of our need of him, <coughs> excuse me, of him. Our need for prayer, our need for forgiveness, our need indeed for joy, our need to see where we can be happy, even in the midst of this crazy world, as, it's, as we say, where do we find that happiness? Within our family, within our community, within our work, maybe? Where is it that we find happiness? If we encourage and incorporate God into that, into everyday life, then we will find our happiness. Happiness is an unusual word. It's, it's a word that means without pining for. It doesn't mean that you go around with a big smile on your face all day, every day that would be just a little bit not in the realm of happiness. That would be something else entirely. Happiness is without pining. Without pining for who? Without pining for God. Of having God part and parcel of our lives. How do we do that? Well, finally, very simply, maybe in a, and it's, it's simple and it's not so simple. Here are a few ideas. Maybe set aside a little time to pray between now and Christmas whether it's in the church, simply to walk in and light a candle. It only takes a moment, something like that. A prayer maybe in your own private space, in your own room. A prayer with the family before meals. It could be something very simple. Some aspect of prayer that you can incorporate into your everyday life. If you've fallen out with somebody, maybe make a move to heal the rift. Even if it's thrown back in your face. You've made, you've made the move, even if it is. And a lot of times, rifts are so deep that you wonder how to even overcome them or just say, look, I'm not going there. I went there before, I'm not going there again. Maybe a move, even if it is thrown back in the face. Maybe to go out of our way to visit somebody that's in need of a visit. Somebody maybe that doesn't have maybe too many friends or living alone or finds it difficult to socialize, you know them within our parish communities. Somebody maybe that just might want just a hello. How are you doing? Is there anything I can do? Maybe to make sure to include the sacrament of penance in your preparation. We have that here in Knock coming up in the next couple of weeks <clears throat> in the Reconciliation Chapel. Advent is a time of preparedness to wake up to our spiritual lives if we've fallen asleep. After all, absence is a test. And all of us will not want our initials to be up on the blackboard. We just don't want that. We do the honourable thing. 
the Lord doesn't want it either. And that's the great thing. He wants us to be with him. He wants us to have a life with him, to incorporate him in our lives. And these are some of the small ways maybe that we can do that. Others that you might think of yourselves. But to be prepared, because absence is the test. Amen. We stand and profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven. He is and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We offer our prayers and our intentions now to our Heavenly Father. Today, we pray for all who exercise authority within the Church, especially Pope Francis, in his, mystery, in his ministry. <coughs> may, be, may he be alive to the presence of God <coughs> in the Holy Spirit. Lord hear, Lord, hear us. We pray for our own parish community and all our parish communities that in the middle of hustle and bustle of preparing for Christmas, the message of Jesus may not be forgotten. Lord, hear us. <coughs> we pray now, too, that this Advent may open our own minds and hearts to the Lord's presence in our lives and to see maybe where we can go the extra mile. Lord, hear us. <coughs> We pray for those whose lives are filled with sorrow or sickness or pain in any way, mind, body, or spirit. Pray that they may realize that God has not abandoned them and that the Lord is walking with them. Lord, hear us. And pause now for a moment and bring before the Lord our own prayer for today, whatever it may be. We incorporate all the petitions that have been sent in to us. We pray for those who have asked for our prayers. Lord, hear us. Last night in the parish church, we inaugurated our new parish pastoral council, so we pray for our parish pastoral council and all the members who have given of their time generously to the council and on the parish, indeed, who have nominated them to council. We pray that the Lord will guide them as they work together for the pastoral good of our community. Lord, hear us. And finally, we pray for the faithfully parted. <clears throat> we remember in particular Frank Conboy of Adragul, whose anniversary occurs at this time. We pray for all who have passed on before us. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. Let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. May their souls and the souls of all the faithfully parted, to the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Heavenly Father, as we look forward to your son's birth among us, may we live by the example he has shown us with true Christian faith. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. If you'd like to be seated now, we now have our offertory collection. And as always, this collection goes towards the upkeep of the shrine and uh, the provision of all the facilities we have here at Knox. Your generosity at this time will be greatly appreciated. Thank you very much indeed.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devout devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. We stand for the preface. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation. <coughs> that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Please remain standing or kneel for the consecration. <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body 
and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Glad to be seated now, please. <clears throat> Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Francis, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With a simple gesture now, we just turn to one another and offer each other the sign of the Lord's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter into my roof. Let me say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For those of you now joining us on webcam and can't receive communion, we invite you to make an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are there already and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. For those of you here in the Basilica, who wish to receive, we invite you to come forward through the central aisle of each chapel and return by the side aisles. If there is somebody that cannot come forward from their seat, don't worry about it. Let one of us know and we'll come to you. Those of you who are confined to the front rows there, remain where you are and somebody will come to you as well. Those who are celiac can receive, uh, we have celiac hosts here at the uh, back of the sanctuary. And finally, if there's somebody present that just simply wishes uh, to receive a blessing, uh, you're more than welcome to come forward if you'd indicate as such, please, by crossing your arms in front of you.
O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. We offer a prayer now to Mary as we say together, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of Knock, Saint Joseph, Saint John the Evangelist, let us pray. <clears throat> May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray, for even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and to hold fast to what endures. Through Christ our Lord. Just before this uh, final blessing, to thank you all sincerely for being here with us this afternoon. And just to, to remind you, we have, uh, you can see the collection in the hallways coming in. One of only two groups that we allow in on the shrine grounds for collections, and that is the St. Vincent de Paul and the Order of Malta. St. Vincent de Paul, as you know, do tremendous Trojan work, as they say, uh, at this particular time of the year. They're in all our communities and all our parishes, and they're quietly, silently, and anonymously doing the work, really, that an awful lot of people, other people don't want to do. They hit the front line in terms of the needs of people, especially at this time of the year. Those that really can't afford, maybe can't afford Christmas, can't, can't afford an awful lot of things and are struggling. So St. Vincent de Paul meets that need. And they do it, like I say, behind the scenes. There's no talk or fuss about it. People know where to go and who to go. They do tremendous work. I know in this parish, I know that for a fact, of course, because uh, I know the people involved. And I know the... Um, I suppose the, 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 the call on their services and especially on funds at this time of the year. So I know you probably cr uh, contributed on the way in. Maybe you might little like to contribute a little more on the way out. I leave that to your own good consciences. They do great work. You probably know who they are in, their, in your own parishes too. So, um, but just if, if you can support them at all, um, do please do so uh, on the way out as you leave uh, the Mass this morning. And again, if you're looking for something to do a little bit later on, I always point you in the way of our museum down that way, which tells the story of Knock from 1879 to today. It's free. You just walk in, have a look around. Wonderful people down there too. Nice coffee shop beside it. So uh, in that particular area, it tells the story of Knock. So you might like to do that and take your time with us here in Knock for the next little while. Just to remind you as well, as we enter into the season of Advent, that little thing, the extra prayer, a little bit, a little bit of time for yourselves, maybe see where you could maybe help out um, or maybe look to do an act of kindness maybe. Uh, you never know, they're presented to us all the whole time. Sometimes we see them and sometimes we don't see the opportunity, but maybe to be a little bit more aware of them during these opportunities during Advent itself. So now I'll bless any religious objects you may happen to have with you and conclude with the final blessing of today's Mass. Almighty Father, bless these medals and religious objects, and may the saving presence of Christ be in the homes in which they are placed and those who use them. And I bless them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. To all of you who have joined us online as well, a big wave from Knock, wherever you happen to be across the world, we pray God keep you well and safe in this Advent time leading up to Christmas. The Lord be with you all. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in the peace of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>